Would you believe me now If I told you I got caught up in a wave Almost gave it away Would you feel me now If I told you I was terrified for days Thought I was gonna break Oh, I couldn't stop it, try to slow I'd like to welcome everyone to the Northern Star Student Remembrance event. Thank you for the opening song from Seven Days, a student a cappella group on campus. We'll have a few more performances from Seven Days throughout the evening. My name is Katie Jackson, Associate Vice President and Dean of Students, and I have the honor of hosting you this evening as we hold space for the students who have passed in the last year. With the indigenous heritage of Minnesota in mind, we will begin with a land acknowledgement for the land on which the university resides. The University of Minnesota Twin Cities is located on the traditional ancestral and contemporary lands of indigenous people. The university resides on Dakota land ceded to the trustees of 1837 and 1851. 
It is important to acknowledge this history as we work to educate the campus and community about this land and our relationships with it and each other. As we begin tonight, please note that this event is being live streamed and will be available to you all on the Northern Stars website. I especially wanna thank the families who are able to join us for this very special event tonight. The students we honor here today were very important to the university community, to the students, staff, and faculty who knew them, but especially their families. This event may be emotional at times. For those attending in person, there are staff who can be found in the back of the theater who are here to support you. Thank you for being with us, whether in person or virtually. I'd also like to thank Executive Vice President and Provost Rachel Croson, Vice President for Student Affairs, Calvin Phillips, and Senior Associate Vice President for Student Affairs, Maggie Tao, for your support in making this event possible. Thank you to the many campus staff, representatives, and attendants this evening, including Regent Farnsworth, our collegiate deans, campus leaders, and the faculty, staff, and students who are with us today to help honor these students. For this special remembrance, our purpose is to focus on honoring the students no longer with us, while also celebrating their impact on the University of Minnesota community. This event draws heavily from campus and local traditions for its name and program components. The name of the event, Northern Stars, comes from an important line in the university's alma mater, Hale, Minnesota. You'll hear the alma mater later on this evening, as well as a more thorough description of its history. After tonight's event, each family will receive a certificate of attendance for their student from the university, along with a candle holder handcrafted by a local company founded by graduates of this institution. The candle holder harnesses the light each student brings to the university and beautifully displays that light, which will last far longer than their physical presence on this campus. At this time, I'd like to invite Executive Vice President and Provost Rachel Croson to make a few opening remarks. Thank you, Katie, and good evening, everyone. Tonight, we meet to remember the students, one professional student and staff member, one graduate student, and nine undergraduate students who we've lost over the last year and who will forever be in our hearts. To their families, to all who called them friends and mentors, and to all of the students, faculty, and staff of our university, I share your sorrow today and forevermore. There's nothing I can say here that can express the collective loss that we feel. But on behalf of the University of Minnesota family, I affirm our solemn duty and responsibility to fill the silence of those we remember with our support and gratitude. They will forever carry on the gopher spirit. In this time of grief and unity, of sadness and continuity. Let the light of remembrance fill this moment and the entire University of Minnesota community with strength and great appreciation. And let us carry this important Minnesota tradition to never forget. It is said that love is how you stay alive, even after you're gone. And those we remember today have been truly loved. I also want to express my thanks to our student hosts and performers who are participating to acknowledge their peers. Wherever a beautiful soul has been, there's now a trail of memories. And may those memories be a blessing to you. And now I would like to introduce Drew and Gabrielle 
leaders of the Council of Graduate Students and Professional Student Government to begin recognizing the students being remembered this evening. Thank you, Executive Vice President and Provost Carson. My name is Drew Swartz, and I am the President of the Council of Graduate Students. At this time, we would like to honor the students, now our Northern Stars, who have left us in the past year. We will read each name and share a few thoughts about each student. We will first honor professional and graduate students, then take a few, moment, few moments to reflect while seven days a cappella returns to perform for us. We will then continue with honoring our undergraduate students. Our graduate student this evening is from the School of Public Health, Madeline Kingsbury, School of Public Health. Madeline was a graduate student in the School of Public Health. She was well liked by her cohort, cohort members, a loving mother of two children, and was a kind and warm, warm person, a friend to all. Madeline was honored to have been accepted at the U of M and was looking forward to conti continuing her education. Her family hopes that other victims will hear her story and will find the courage to seek help to end the cycle of abuse. Good evening. My name is Gabriel Richardson, and I am the president of the Professional Student Government. Our professional student this evening is from the School of Public Affairs. Jack Mobius, School of Public Affairs. Jack was a professional student in the School of Public Affairs and a staff member as a projects manager and executive administrator in the Institute on the environment. Jack was committed to service within higher education and supported university administration to build relationships and conduct business strategically, focusing on the environment protection, social justice, and diversity. Jack lived in South Minneapolis with his spouse, Nate. Jack was also an arts commissioner for the city of Minneapolis and sought to save lives as an organ donor. We will now take a moment to reflect as we listen to Seven Days a Cappella.
And I saw the peaks of my own that you probably meant for us. And I tore out the few from my bones that you probably never lost. And I saw the peaks of my own that you probably meant for us. I would like to introduce Sarah Davis, president of the undergraduate student government to recognize the undergraduate students being remembered this evening. Thank you, Dean Jackson. I am honored to remember, I am honored to remember the following undergraduate students. Anthony Amini, College of Education and Human Development. Anthony Amini, an undergraduate student in the College of Education and Human Development, embarked on his academic journey in the 90s. He paused his studies and later returned to complete his degree in the fall of 2023. Anthony's ties to the university run deep. All seven of his brothers graduated from the University of Minnesota. Anthony's enthusiasm for his education reignited re upon readmission as he pursued his long-held dream of attaining his bachelor's degree. Notably, both of Anthony's parents were university employees, and their family connection was even spotlighted in the pages of the Star Tribune. Their legacy continues to resonate within the university community. Geo Beach, College of Continuing and Professional Studies. Gio was enrolled in the University of Minnesota's Talented Youth in Math program, commonly referred to as Umpty Ump. Alongside attending two university classes, he actively engaged in his high school robotics and quiz bowl teams. Gio's character shone through as a kind, gentle soul, while also revealing a competitive edge for gaming. Additionally, he dedicated his time to church mission trips and volunteered with his family at Feed My Starving Children, packing food for those in need. Their memory continues to inspire kindness and dedication in all who knew them. Karen Delgado Villanueva, College of Liberal Arts. Karen was a strong, highly respected student leader in the President's Emerging Scholars PES program, where she served as a peer advisor and as co-president of the Mijente Latinx Student Cultural Center. During her time at the University of Minnesota, Karen was always upbeat and positive, helping and supporting those around her. Karen's family hopes the legacy she built as an advocate for the needs of the others and the people around her will continue through the work of her peers. Edmund Hamilton, College of Science and Engineering. Edmund was a percussionist, baseball player, and scholar, and he pursued his passion for science and math, 
ultimately studying physics within the College of Science and Engineering. Known affectionately as Mo, he cherished his relationships with loved ones, leaving an indelible mark on all who knew him. Mo would like us to re remind you that the first law of thermodynamics states, energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be converted or transformed from one form to another. So you will see his energy in others and his spirit will live on in your memories. In our grief, we find solace in the blessing of Edmund's life, which continues to enrich ours. As we bid farewell, we celebrate Edmund's final act of generosity through organ donation, wishing him eternal peace. Caetano Joe Kinua, College of Liberal Arts. Caetano Joe, also known as CJ by his friends and family, was a student in the College of Liberal Arts but had expressed a clear interest in transferring to the College of Science and Engineering to pursue a degree in computer science. He was a member of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. program community on campus and involved with the National Guard off campus, traveling on weekends for his service. CJ shared with his advisor when he started in the fall that he enjoyed playing basketball, working out, and reading in his spare time. Sumit Maddy, College of Liberal Arts. Sumit was studying computer science in the College of Liberal Arts. He enjoyed walking, listening to music, and watching NFL football, and is remembered for debating on the merits of whether Madden or FIFA are better than the other. He lived on campus in 17th Avenue Resi Residence Hall. Prior to joining the University of Minnesota community, he briefly attended the University of Iowa. He was known to his friends and family as a kind and gentle soul. Siham Odawa, College of Liberal Arts. Siham was an excellent and high achieving student in the College of Liberal Arts, intending to study computer science or management information systems. Her range of information technology interests drew her to begin crafting a degree of her own making and she worked closely with advising staff to create a unique and inclusive program plan. Siham shared with her advisor that her favorite hobby was reading and that she took every opportunity she could to read. Zane Stranger, College of Liberal Arts. Zane was an undergraduate student in the College of Liberal Arts and had a wide variety of interests and talents. Zane loved music, was involved in his high school drumline, played the marimba, and studied several languages. Zane could even recite pi to 100 places. He enjoyed learning about geography, world history, and participated in quiz bowl and table tennis. Brian Vang, College of Liberal Arts. Brian transferred from Century College to the University of Minnesota and was interested in pursuing a Bachelor of Science in Business to study management information systems. As the youngest of 10 siblings in his family, Brian will be missed as he is, follows the passing of his father early last year. Brian had connected to campus as a part of the Asian American and Pacific Islander students promoting inspiration, resilience, and empowerment, or ASPIRE, as a mentee in the ASPIRE, in the Aspire mentorship program. Our Northern Stars will be remembered here this evening and will always be a part of our maroon and gold communi community. I would now like to invite Dr. Katie Jackson back to the podium to continue our event. The University of Minnesota, alma mater, Hail Minnesota, was written in 1904 and was performed for the first time that spring to honor the graduating class. The lyrics reference the impact the university has had on students and the expectation that the education and experiences that students have guide student development and growth. This song highlights the mutual relationship 
between the institution and students that each shall make the other stronger and greater. The university serves as a northern star to its students and students, those with us today and those who cannot be, are a northern star to the University of Minnesota. Hail Minnesota is performed today by Victoria Smarwawa, a student and senior from Seven Days a Cappella. Minnesota, hail to thee, hail to thee, our college dear. Thy light shall ever be a beacon bright and clear. Thy sons and daughters true will proclaim thee. Thank you for joining us today for this important tribute to our wonderful students. We remember today especially how truly lucky we are to have known and shared a community with each student honored this evening. All of us participating in this event today are just a small number of those who were positively impacted by the lives and gifts of each of our Northern Stars. Let us now take a moment to recognize all of the students honored here tonight, including others who we made no formal recognition to honor the wishes of their families. As our event comes to a close, Please know we hold each of you and your families close. For the families here in person, we will have materials in the lobby for you to take with you when you leave this evening. And for families not in person today, we will mail you those materials. For all of our guests here in person tonight, we'll have space for conversation and light refreshments in the lobby. With thanks and gratitude, we wish you a good night.